Okay, hello Bio2. We are continuing on with our last part of Section 1, Hormones and Plant Growth. And if you remember, our last video ended with the idea that auxins, which are an important plant hormone, are responsible for what is known as gravitropism, which is the response of plant to the force of gravity. So we're going to continue on and see how that is possible. So auxins will build up on the lower side of roots and stems. And then in stems, the auxins stimulate cell elongation, helping to turn the trunk upright. So that's fighting the force of gravity, turning the trunk upright. And then in roots, their effects are exactly the opposite. There, auxins inhibit cell growth and elongation, causing the roots to grow downward. So again, that's kind of making it go with gravity, I guess, if you will. Things are kind of supposed to go down. So in roots and in stems, they have opposite effects here, causing them to go different ways in gravity. Or, and just in terms of gravity, they go different ways. So auxins, they will also influence how roots grow around objects in the soil. I believe we read an article about this earlier in the year, about how the root hairs can kind of feel their way around. And the reason why they can do this now is because of this substance known as auxins. And then if a growing root is forced sideways by an obstacle, the auxins accumulate on the lower side of the root, and therefore that's the way they will grow. They will bend around it. So the auxins are kind of responsible for something we've already discussed earlier in the year. And some more interesting things about uh, aux auxins, sorry, kind of hard word to say there, that when they're in high concentrations, they will inhibit the elongation of root cells. Again, I think we mentioned that before, where high concentrations stimulate the growth in the stem. They inhibit the elongation of the root cells. And uninhibited cells on the top elongate more than auxin-inhibited cells on the bottom, and the root grows downward. So it kind of... It kind of uh, changes the direction in which it will inhibit. So there'll be a lot of auxins at the top of the root, so therefore our roots won't want to grow up. There's just a little auxin down at the bottom, and therefore that's when they're going to grow. They grow from the bottom away from the area where there is a lot of auxins. And so auxins also play a role in the way that plants will branch. They regulate cell division in our meristems. So remember the tip is where our new thing where our new cells are produced, so they regulate cell division there. And as a stem grows in length, it produces lateral buds, and a lateral bud is a meristematic area on the side of the stem that can give rise to side branches. So a lateral bud, you can see on the left, is just an area, it does have, uh, or an area where there is new meristematic tissue, but almost always it's gonna grow into <coughs> uh, branches. It can't grow into any of the other types. So most lateral buds do not start growing right away, and the reason for this delay is that growth by the lateral buds is inhibited by auxins. So there are auxins present in that area saying, hey, it's not yet time for you to it's not yet time for you to start growing. And remember that it's all growing up there. All the auxins are coming from this apical meristem up in the top. So remember hormones, they grow or they're produced in one area and they affect another. So they're Infect, or they affect this, these lateral buds, which are in a different area. And because auxins move out from the apical meristem, what I just said, the closer a bud is to the stem's tip, the more it is inhibited. So in this phenomenon is called apical dominance. So what this is saying is that this, these lateral buds at the top are more inhibited than these lateral buds at the bottom, because you can see we have three leaves branching off here, two, 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 where we only have one right here. That's because there's more auxin towards the top, and this is a phenomenon called apical dominance. And then, when our, however, when our apical meristem is removed, our concentration of auxin is reduced, and the side branches begin to grow more rapidly. So once we remove this top area where all our auxins are coming from, the plant branches will kind of explode, and they grow much more rapidly than what they're supposed to. And so auxin, so that's kind of it about how auxins interact within the plants. Now we're going to kind of look at how uh, they've been used in other terms. So chemists have produced compounds that mimic the effects of auxins. And since high concentration of auxins inhibit growth, many of these are used as herbicides, which are compounds that are toxic to plants. So we use this uh, technology that plants produce these auxins. We know how they act and we mimic that and we use them to kill off plants that we do not want. And that is it kind of about the auxin. So now we're going to get into our other types. So first is cytokinins, 
And these are plant hormones that are produced in growing roots and developing fruits and seeds. And their function is to delay the aging of leaves and they play important roles in the early growth stages of plant in the early stages of plant growth. And in plants, they stimulate cell division and the growth of our lateral buds, and they will cause dormant seeds to sprout. So cytokinins are responsible for kind of bringing us out of our dormancy, not bringing us, bringing plants out of their dormancy, out of their, almost their hibernation type thing. And they also, cytokinins and auxins often produce opposite effects, so they're kind of, they're kind of uh, anti protagonists and antagonists. So auxins will stimulate cell elongation, where cytokinins will inhibit cell elongation and cause cells to grow thicker. And then auxins will inhibit our growth of lateral buds, while cytokinins stimulate lateral bud growth. So they might kind of seem like they're fighting against each other, but the plant would not work normally if it did not have both of these present. And recent experiments will show that the rate of cell growth in most plants is determined by the concentration of auxins to cytokinins in growing plants, therefore, the relative concentration of auxins, cytokinins, and other hormones determine how the plant grows. So we can actually map out um, using our, these, the concentrations of these different types to kind of see how much is present in different growing plants. So our second to last, uh, our second to last hormone are known as gibberellins, and these are growth-promoting substances in plants and gibberellins will produce dramatic increase in size, particu particularly in stems and fruit, and they're also produced by seed tissue, and they're responsible for the rapid early growth of many plants. So gibberellins, they're gonna be our early growth stage and rapid growth stage. And our last one is ethylene, and so in response to auxins, fruit tissues release small amounts of the hormone ethylene, and ethylene is a plant hormone that causes fruits to ripen, so if you've ever bought peaches and put them in kind of a brown paper bag and it kind of helps them ripen, it's because they are all producing this ethylene and it gets trapped inside that paper bag and it'll kind of help them mature more faster. And commercial producers of fruit sometimes use this hormone to control the ripening process, which again, kind of like that whole brown bag thing. So this is it for section one. Uh, let me know if you have any questions.